and now we need to focus on the roof cover. Uh, we will find the roof cover in elements and we it's roof covering. So we find this function in the engineering role or in the architecture role. We'll activate this function. We'll change, um, we'll go to its properties and we can establish a number of layers that are required uh, for quantities. So based upon the number of layers we select, we can establish um, the layers that we want to impose for uh, our roof so that we get uh, quantities in that uh, manner. We can also group them if we want more than five layers. So we can just uh, match the quantities or um, say that it's both because the final quantities actually are per square meter so it's not a volume quantity we can have here an example of um, I'll just show an example of a roof uh, layer layering so here is an example so all these layers that go in the roof cover can be modeled or grouped in order to not extend this limit of five layers. Of course, we can do two covers and it would uh, match, but there's actually no point. I'm going to focus on what can be seen. So um, I can uh, do two layers or three layers and uh, the others will just be in quantities as per square meter. So we can uh, model this kind of uh, layers. We, I will model the insulation and this underlayment and metal uh, roof deck. So in order to do this, we can choose here three layers and we can now work on the thicknesses. You see the thicknesses are uh, quite small so for um, the isolation, the first layer. The... On top, there's a membrane. Um, waterproof mem membrane. So I can just say here um, membrane and another layer will be the thermal isolation. And this can be the roof deck, the steel, metal sheeting. So we can go even further to get more uh, layers. We need to assign some roles. So the trades we assign will be found then in the report. So by assigning trades to material, we can get very specific reports. Uh, I will include all of them in roof construction. Roofing work. Uh, isolation can go in isolation or roofing as well. I will group everything into roofing so that when I get quantities for roof, I get them in the same report. Uh, the priorities can be important if we had intersection with another uh, roof covering, but it's no point here. We can establish the, the how the eaves and the ridge will uh, be trimmed. And we can say a vertical trim. And for the top, let's unite like this. And then we go for format properties and here we can control the line thicknesses of different layers. So I can assign a thick layer for the for a thick line for the first as it's really uh, small so that I just see it as a thick line. And then we have here the layer and also we can set the finishes. So we can go for office. We have different um, surfaces for animation depending on the material. So I can choose here something that looks like a roof. Oh, this is not that industrial roof. So well, I think it's just a metal facade. Or 
I can go in metals. I will choose just the uh, color to uh, that we we place on top, and uh, the others are can be different colors just to make sure that we show different materials, so it's easy for us to control the material. And for steel. I can also assign a surface. So we choose for the steel, a texture, and then we jump to surface elements. This is how we see the elements when we create a section through that material. So if you have a look here in the section, one we see how we represent so if i want to see the insulation like this then i will have to assign that kind of style area so the first style can be metal okay membrane is not metal but i'll choose just a full uh, coloring fill uh, of that area then i choose insulation material and the other will be metal so the first one doesn't matter that much you can just use a fill or something because it's very thin so we don't see it and after we work with all this uh, thing we can save this into the library and say three layer cover so imagine you have you do several types of roofs every time in your project and you, if you save them you'll just load that type so you don't have to go through all the settings all the time so this is how you can improve the workflow and now here is a setting very specific per project uh, so uh, height of the bottom level above roof frame so um, as you see here in this section the this composition uh, that creates the uh, roof cover has an offset from the girder itself. So the roof frame I modeled matched the girder and here we have to do something uh, to improve this uh, part So we need to offset this roof cover with the purlins height so The purlins height in this situation is 180 so um, I will need to say point uh, 18 so that it offsets with the um, purlins height so that it will sit on the purlins and it will offset from the initial roof so this is it as a setting for the covering we hit ok and we just have to match or we can just do a shape within the initial roof frame so the yellow part is the roof frame and I will uh, place the magenta part, the roof uh, cover. So it's two clicks diagonally as uh, before, and then escape. It will match that shape. So um, if you had a more complex shape, then when entering the roof frame, you would just use automatic detection, area detection, if this geometry is too complex, you can make a 2D simplification and it will match that certain shape. For now, I kept everything simple and orthogonal, so there was no uh, challenge to place this. And if we have a front view, we can see that there is an offset between the roof cover and the concrete structure. Also, it can be seen here. 